Well, folks, this is Bob the Science Guy, and greeting from northern Michigan. For the last few weeks, the Flat Earth has been all abuzz on their black swan. Well, it's time to strike back. Thanks to J. Tolan Media One, I present the Mallard Duck of the Flat Earth. Game over, boys and girls. Welcome to the real world. Now, the Flat Earth many times will use the photographs of J. Tolan Media One to demonstrate that we can see things further than we normally should just with the use of a little infrared photography. But the problem with J. Tolan is that he rarely identifies land masses correctly. And even though he has very, very good equipment to take these photographs, his interpretive skills are, shall we say, lacking. So let's have a look at a couple of examples. Now, the archetypical example of Jay Tolan's work is his observation of Mount San Jacinto, 123 miles away from Point Doom on the coast of Malibu. So let's go ahead and let him introduce this photograph. Now, let's have a look at some high resolution infrared photos. Look at that, folks. So much resolution 24 megapixels. This was taken with the Sony Alpha 6000 converted to 830 nanometer uh, infrared. Look at that. Just incredible. Infrared is an amazing technology, folks, but even more amazing is what it reveals. Behold the flat earth, folks. This image is so powerful. That mountain is over 123 miles away. Well, indeed, it is a powerful image, but probably not for the reasons J. Tolan Media One thinks it is. Let's go ahead and have a look at this mountain, see what we would expect to see from Point Doom versus what we actually see. And we'll look at two different ways of evaluating that. This photo is indeed powerful as a globe Earth proof. Now, of course, the first thing to do is to confirm the distances and elevations. So here's his line of sight from Point Dume to Mount San Jacinto. And it is indeed approximately 123 miles between those two points. Now, Tolan's observation point was approximately 150 feet off of the beach. So we're going to go ahead and go to Walter Bisland's Advanced Earth Curve Calculator, and let's see how much of Mount San Jacinto should be seen. So as you can see, here we are at Bisland's Advanced Earth Curve Calculator. We've got the observation height of about 46 meters, which is about 150 feet. The target size is 3,252 meters high, or 10,672 feet. And our distance is 198 kilometers, or 123 miles. Now, according to this, we should have 1,337 meters of the top of that mountain visible from that distance. Let's go have a quick look and see how that works out. Now, here's how we're going to do it. This is our line from Point Doom in Malibu to the top of Mount San Jacinto. And where I have my cursor, we have an elevation of approximately 6,335 feet. And according to the Advanced Earth Curve Calculator, we should be able to see everything from 6,284 feet and up. So let's see if we can zoom that in just a little bit. That's not too bad right there. So let's go on up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a line right at that point right there. Now at this point where we have this cross line is approximately 6,200 feet above sea level. Now according to Walter Bisson's Advanced Earth Curve Calculator, that should be where the horizon is. So let's go ahead and have a look at that just from a side view. So what we have here is our line of sight from Malibu to Mount San Jacinto, and we also have that little crossbar at where the horizon should be according to the Earth Curve Calculator. So let's go ahead and take a little snapshot of that. We'll put it into Photoshop and compare it to J. Tolan Media One's photograph. Okay, so right here what I've got is J. Tolan's image in the back, and then I've got the one that I just took from Google Earth in the front. And what we're going to do is match them up. So right here you can see there's the peak of the mountain right there and the peak of the mountain here. Now we're also going to look at the peak of this mountain right here, which is over here. 
So we've got to scale that out a little bit. Now, as you can see, we have the peak of the mountain lined up with the peak of the mountain. And we also have the peak of the side peak lined up with the corresponding image on Tolan's video. So let's go ahead and move those up a little bit. Here, we'll get rid of these hash marks. Look at that, how it's lining up. Now note right here where the crossbar is. It's literally right on the horizon. So what I see from this is that Toland's image matches up perfectly with the curved surface of the Earth. Now recall, of course, that that crosshair was put well up the side of the mountain. There's over 6,000 feet missing of that mountain due to Earth curvature. But if you don't believe me, I've got a second way to show you. Now this is a fantastic 3D rendering by a creator by the name of OK Relos. And I have a link to his channel in the description. And I suggest you check it out because this is a rather long eight minute video and he does a fantastic job from start to finish. But let's go ahead and see some of the highlights. So here's the rendering of California and you see the San Joaquin Valley right here and you see the mountains. Now let's go ahead and bring that forward a little bit. Now one thing that is very interesting about this is that this is a flat rendition of the state of California. Now he has the capability of doing this on Earth curve as well, but this one happens to be flat. Let's go ahead and look forward a little bit. And the second thing that he's going to do is come up here to Point Doom and use the same location that we're all using for Jay Tolan's photograph. So he'll come down and get right on the hill and rescale it so that it's accurate. And we're going to have a look at Mount San Jacinto. And there it is. Now what he's going to do is zoom in a little bit on it and make it a little clearer. And there he is. So there is his view of Mount San Jacinto on his 3D rendering software from the location where J. Tolan Media One took his photograph. Look at that. Matches up to the pixel. See that? It's a perfect match of Tolan's photograph. But let's let him explain what little trick he used. So what gives? Does this mean that the, does this prove that the Earth is flat? Well, I wasn't exactly honest earlier. Uh, I forgot to mention something. And that is that this viewer program here can use both a flat Earth model and a round Earth model. And we were doing this whole thing in round earth mode. So if I can sh if I show you this from the side, you can see how California is slightly curved. And this curvature is appropriate for living on a hypothetical sphere or globe with a radius of approximately 6,400 kilometers. Um, I have a slider in this rendering dialog here where I can change the size of the globe from what it really is to completely flat, to globe, to flat, to globe, to flat, you get the idea. Now let's go back to Point Doom uh, and see what it looks like when I use a flat Earth model to recreate that picture. Okay, so again, this is the view, the virtual view of the mountain using a round Earth model. Uh, using a globe with a radius of 6,378.1 kilometers. Uh, and now I'm going to slowly change to a flat Earth model, and then you can see what the differences are. And whoa, okay, that's amazing. Uh, that is a huge mountain. Uh, we are suddenly seeing about approximately 2,400 meters more of that mountain as if we were using a uh, uh, a curved Earth model. So just to be entirely certain about this, this is a rendering that matches an actual photograph using, which is based on a, on a round globe. And this would be what that photograph should have looked like uh, using a flat Earth model. So what does this all mean? Um, does this prove that the Earth is round? No, it does not. Um, the round Earth theory made a testable prediction namely that a certain mountain would look a certain way when photographed from a certain distance, and then an experiment, in this case a photograph, matches exactly with that prediction. So that doesn't mean that the Earth is round, it doesn't mean that the round Earth theory is true, but it also definitely doesn't mean that it is false. 
On the other hand, um, flat earth theory also made a prediction, namely that the mountain when photographed from this particular distance should look like this, but then in the experiment, the actual photograph, it ended up looking like this. So that unfortunately did not work out. Uh, this does not mean that the earth is round. It just means that flat earth theory has, uh, has some explaining to do. So folks, there you have it. As Oke Reyes goes on to say, this does not prove that the earth is spherical, but it supports it. What it does do is it rules out the chance that the earth is flat, unless you put in some rather wild atmospheric effects that are basically made up ad hoc to try and explain this devastating piece of evidence to the flat earth model. Now, the thing that absolutely amazes me is that I put this out probably about a year ago, or at least mentioned this a year ago, and Flat Earth continues to point to this as evidence of a flat Earth. It flies in the face of all actual evidence. And this is why Flat Earth is not a scientific study. As I've said before, it's not even a topic of a scientific conversation. It is the pet rock of YouTube. So, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by as we tear apart on yet another Flat Earth proof. So make sure you hit that little like and subscribe button down there. Maybe ring the bell icon. So tomorrow I have the second part of my series on the Flat Earth answer to Professor Dave's 10 challenge questions. It should be fun and I hope you'll tune in. Take care guys.